Yo, everybody, this is Jason, Zombie Collector. Kind of a big deal here in the YouTube community. Thought I'd go live for a few moments like this, as the song says. A few moments like this. So I have a little shocking lane. And um, so I thought I'd go live and just chit chat. I have JT's um, crate I'm still going through. I've been uh, a little bit busy. Hey, kind of a big deal. Ah, what is up, Gary? How you doing, brother? I'm glad to see. I see you're making the rounds again a little bit. I know you're not doing videos as much right now, but I know I've seen you making some comments. That's good. Making some comments. Let people know you're still there. Um, greatly appreciate it. Love seeing you around. Me, me, hermano, me, Chico. I don't know. Does white people can white people say that? I mean, both of us are here in the Midwest. You're in Illinois. I'm in Indiana. Can we? Is it a cultural appropriation of Spanish? I don't know. Hey, what's up, Izzy? Starting to get back in the game. We're gonna get you off the bench. Get back in the game. What's up, Izzy? Izzy's Portuguese. Maybe he can speak to this. Can we culturally appropriate the word Chico? Hey, Alan Neal. Alan, dude. Are you trying to be like sneaky about going to four sharp corners? Because I hear you keep going in there with your buddy and always asking about me or whatever, but you don't ever tell me you're going. How many times have I told you, let me know and I will go together and you keep sneaking in there without me? Not cool, man. Not cool. You don't think uh, you don't think uh, Tracy's gonna tell me? Yeah, me and Tracy, we're gonna go. We all we go all the way back to about a couple of years ago. We go all the way back. It's not you. He keeps saying it's you. Oh, Mark from Kentucky. Hold your, hide your rookie cards. Well, then he got you confused with somebody else because somebody else apparently keeps going in there, bringing up my guy, bringing up, bringing me up, like name dropping me. But uh, he thought he said his name was Alan. So, yeah, exactly, exactly, Gary. He's over here lying, name dropping me, trying to get, trying to get some uh, freebies, trying to get a discount. But don't even tell me he's going to be there. Yeah, Gary comes all the way from Illinois just to go to Four Sharp Corners. But, yeah. Mark from Kentucky's here. Izzy's here. Gary's here. Alan's here. Henry's here. Wow. It's like the who's who of YouTube. But, yeah. All we need now is... uh. Mike, oh, we're set. Yeah, dude, this is where you're going to find about the Mueller report, man. Oh, dude, thanks, Izzy. I really appreciate it, man. Seriously, I mean a lot, dude. Seriously, that's he's loving it, dude. He is absolutely loving it. Dude, that's awesome, Mark. That's a great deal. I can't wait to see uh, the cards. Cannot wait to see it. It's all right, Alan. Your secret's safe with me. Hey, what about this weekend, dude? What about what about this weekend? What about uh, Friday after uh, after I get off of work, or what about Saturday? Check. Look into your schedule. Let's get together this weekend. Maybe we can meet at Four Sharp Corners this Saturday. I'm gonna be there Saturday morning, and I can be there in the afternoon too. That's awesome, Mark. You lucky bloke. You lucky bloke. That's awesome, dude. You hit one up too, Gary. Every you all crazy kids with your four sharp corner orders, getting all getting all the good stuff. <laughs> Henry, you know what? At this rate, they may maybe they will take it. Maybe they will take it at this rate. The new master race, everybody. The Black Gestapo. 
Yeah, buddy. Yeah. What is up? Oh, did you conserve your report card, JT? What? what? Get them straight A's. Oh, can stop it. <laughs> Henry, you are a wordsmith, my friend. A wordsmith. I love it. You just got a small order, Gary. Well, I want to hopefully we see it soon between you and Mark. Sounds like we're going to see some four sharp corner videos coming soon to a theater near you. So that's awesome. Well, I haven't done this for so long. It's almost like I forgot to do the cards. I just talking to you fine young chaps. Let me do this a little bit. There you go. Got some music in the background. What do we have going on here? Goaty Hook. Probably most of you all don't know who Goaty Hook is. It's a Christian punk rock band from the 90s. I'm a big fan of their uh, music. It's a... Uh, the 90s had like a lot of bands that were like uh, kind of fringe bands that happened to be Christian groups and uh, that were really good. And uh, they got some, some you know, recognition, but most of the time people just passed them over. I really like it. Uh, how many cards, dude? I don't know. Honestly, I've done, I haven't done one in a while. I need to get back to it. I had, as you all know, I did like a big smatter of them about a month ago. I did probably like five or six in a row. And then I haven't went back and looked. I really should do it. So, uh, but I probably, I, if I had a guess, if I'm going to do like, if we're talking about the whole 100 cards, I probably, I probably, I probably got about 40% of them, I would say. Between 35 and 40%. If we're talking about the 80, eight, top 80 cards from the 1980s, I would say it's more like 30 to 35%. So, hey, what up? I do it. I do it all for you, uh, Alex. It's all for you, my friend. Hey, I like that last video, dude. I like the uh, last couple of videos I saw the uh, the salesman um, parchment paper. Really like that. And then about oh, Harry Bird. Man, that Harry Bird. You got to make sure you hold the old Harry Bird right, right up here at the top and hold on tight, and then then just squeeze. You gotta squeeze right now, you know. So that hairy bird. Sometimes people might, you know, may have you ask you to uh, turn your head and cough, grab the old hairy bird. But yeah, and I enjoy it. Yeah, I'm glad I won, buddy. It's all about when. It's all about the Benjamins, baby. Baby. I know I do this like a handful of times a year, but I start realizing my hair is starting to get so long, I need to get it shaved off. So I'm probably going to get my hair cut tomorrow after I go watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mother. You thought I was going to say it. You thought I was going to say it, but I didn't. I'm keeping it classy. I'm going to go watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the ninth movie from the director Quentin Tarantino. Tomorrow after work, I am. You're right, Mark. I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a fat John Lennon with my long hair, dude. I need to get one, dude. You got it. We gotta watch it, dude. You got to watch it, man. As like, it, there's a lot of traction about him gonna direct the Star Trek movie, the the new. They're going to, like, revamp Star Trek again or something. They're going to, like, redo I'm like, what? Is Hollywood out of ideas? I mean, like, honestly, at this point, that just, like, makes me wonder. Like, seriously, they got to be out of ideas at this point because you have the original series in movies. Then they redid it with J.J. Abrams just, like, a decade ago. And they made, what, two or three movies and then the third movie sucked because he got all social justice worry on everybody and it bombed. Shocking. And then now they want to revamp it. I mean, though I would like to see a Quentin Tarantino Star Trek movie, I don't know if the world can handle one, quite frankly. Hippie long stockings. I like it. Yeah, Hollywood has been out of ideas for years. 
That's the reason why I'm, more, I'm excited about the Quentin Tarantino movie because you know when you go see a movie from him, there's going to be an original idea. It's going to be his version uh, that he's created. And I, I love that about Tarantino. Yeah, I'm, I appreciate you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it that you appreciate my ridiculous humor. Victor Negron, what is up, homie? Oh, I know. Like, there's what three, four guys that play Spider Man already? It's ridiculous, dude. Remaking 80s movies? Yeah, I know. Way, I know. Oh, my gosh, dude. Like, here's the thing they announced Blade. This is the thing, guys. Let, let's be a hundred here, as a kid say, let's keep it a hundred because they could, they didn't have any black people to announce on their next like four years or two or three year agenda. They had no black people to announce. They announced Blade, even though it's not even in the initial lineup. So for the next three years, like 20, 2020, 2021, and into 2022, there is, there's no like, Black anything, and so they're like, "Oh my gosh, we cannot go in the, the the current social justice warrior climate that we find ourselves in without announcing somebody black." So they're like, "We've got to pick somebody up that's black and make a movie because we got to do it. Because if we go out there and not show us a black person, people are gonna lose their minds because that's what everybody's clamoring for is a black another black superhero." That's not Black Panther. And they were like, we got to get Blade. Let's get Blade back. Which I love the Blade. Well, I love the first two Blade movies. The third one sucked. But I just was like, they, and then they announced it. But then guess what? It's not even on the docket. It ain't even on the docket. He's not even on there. It says to be announced later, like in like four years. So they announced it like it's happening tomorrow. And it's not. So it just cracks me up. Man. That's the world we live in. They're like, we can't show up here with no black people in any of these casts because they will lose their minds. Don't forget that James Bond became a black woman recently. So that don't worry. They're going to have plenty of time. <laughs> Work. Yeah, that'd be a Christian team. No kidding. I honestly thought they're going to make Blade like a transgender Eskimo midget or something. At the way things are going, I would not be surprised at all. Yeah, <laughs> Christmas vacations, non-denominational winter break should be called non-denominational winter solace, family vacation or family gathering, winter solace. So yeah, because you can celebrate that publicly and, and and everywhere else, but if you say Jesus or Christmas, people will lose their minds. But if you want to go and hug a tree and dance around half naked and flowers. Totally fine. Oh, boo, man. They like took my, they like uh, my music. Let's do Joy Electric, not Joy Division, though. That'd be cool, too. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. Steve Cobb's Kids is here. My homie. So, yeah, guys. So, <clears throat> I've been at Lucas football practice for the last three days. So, I'm tomorrow and Friday, actually the whole weekend, Thursday through Sunday, there's nothing going on. So, I'm looking forward to just chillaxing, watching some movies, and just chilling out. So, that will be nice. So, yeah, make sure you text the, um, Alex all the details, everybody. I just want to tell everybody, I'm, like, very impressed. Alex is getting so close to his uh, goal of 53, 1953 Bowman color cards. It's, it's, like, straight up a magical. I cannot wait, man. He's getting so close, you can almost taste it. You can almost taste it. So, it's awesome. We got to make sure that he does like a big old soiree at the end. That's so awesome, dude. Like we need to get, maybe you all need to make sure, I'm sure everybody's subscribed to Steve, uh, Alex, but if you're not, make sure you subscribe to Alex because he is literally coming in, go, sliding into home. He's so close to getting his 53 cards. I think today, 
he was at like 11 cards left maybe or something. And he may have a few more. Uh, he said something coming in or, uh, you know, on the radar. So I'm looking forward to it. It's the final countdown. Yeah, man. It's getting so close. It's almost like you could taste Harry Bird in your mouth. So guys, I'm just gonna let you know I'm gonna grow. I'm growing a beard. I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to grow a. Well, I don't. I can grow a beard, but it's the first time I'm ever doing it, so I need a lot of encouragement. So, you know, it's not because I'm fat because a beard's not gonna cover up my fat body, my my fat face. I always want to see what I look like in a beard, so I need people to encourage me. Even if you don't want to encourage me, if you like me sexy and shaven, you got to at least you know like. Ask me how my beard's doing. I need like random text messages throughout the day. Hey, Jason, how's your beard? Is that beard coming in? How's it? How's it been looking? But I'm I'm afraid if you see it, it's like kind of whitish. So I'm afraid I'm gonna look like Santa Claus before Christmas time, which is even more embarrassing. So I'm just throwing it out there, guys, for sure. <laughs> and the MCU and out, yes, it'll be 2019. It will be the close of MCU universe. And also has this collection. A ch 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 chia beard, yeah, basically. You can do it. Um, I can't. I cannot compete with uh, Eric's beard. No, I. Not only can I not compete with that beard, I probably would lose my job if I had that beard because that's like a quasi, like you know, hiding in Afghanistan mountain beard. You know, like you know, I, I don't know if I could quite pull that one off. So, you know, you know, he's hiding in some caves in, in Afghanistan. Like, I don't know if I can pull that off. ZZ Top, probably the more politically correct one to pick, but I was going with the, the Afghanistan caves. But, yes. I don't even want to – I can't even touch uh, Eric's beard. It's so epic. So, but I was just thinking, you know – I've been I, I, the only time I've ever like started growing out a kind of a beard. I was like, a little bit of a younger man. It was probably before Luca was born. So yeah, it was like thirty ish. I was living in Korea, and I forgot my razor or something. I can't remember. And so I just like I just grow a beard around. So it was like a month in a month in South Korea, and I started looking like, oh, this is what I look like with a beard. That's kind of cool. And then I got back to America, and Luca's mom was like, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's all cut it off or no, or no, no fun. No fun. So it shaved off. It went. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Eric might have to go underground. That's true. Well, here's the thing. I even, I don't know if you, uh, Eric's most recent video, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen that he released it last night or early this morning. <clears throat> but, you know, when somebody like Eric, who's a very even tempered, very uh, well thought out, very slow to anger, slow to um, be, uh, uh, you know, like overtly. Uh, aggressive in his, you know, videos or uh, towards anything, finally has had enough. You know, it's pretty serious. Like you all know, when you come to my channel, I don't, I don't need. I, there's not a slow burn here. I just go to a hundred like that. That's how I am. And either you all like it because you're around, or you don't like it, but you just like to see people crash and burn like myself, or you just like to watch. You're, you're an exhibitionist. But um, but I actually said to Eric, Eric said in his video. Maybe it is a scam. Maybe, maybe maybe it's a scam, and he was. I don't want to believe that, but it's like the more the writing's on the wall, and it's starting to really frustrate somebody like Eric, who's like you know, almost like a Buddhist monk or something, with his like nice and calm and very collective approach. But that's like, dude, I'm just telling you, man. Like I'm just, I'm not drinking the Kool Aid. I, I just know it's 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 all, it's a scam. It's all it's all set up to screw the collectors. I can't do it, man. I can't. I cannot get on behind it. I can't support it. I'm not giving. I mean, not that I was giving him money, any money, but I am not. I don't I ever get a chance. I have. I'm going to say something about it, especially when there's more and more is coming out coming out about it. No. 
Nope, we're not going to do it. Exactly, Gary. That's exactly right. And even I kept my response to Eric very short and sweet, and I just appreciate Eric's perspective. If it, even if I don't, it's kind of, even if I disagree with it, some of what he says, and I still respect Eric. He, he is such a great guy and very, like I said, well spoken, very well thought out, very uh, purposeful in his speech, and he's a great guy. So, yeah, you and me, man. Uh, Steve, you and I have been talking about this for a long time. I don't know how long you've been doing it, but as long as I've known you, you've been that way. And that's how I've been. You go back and watch my first videos. I was talking about like not doing it, man. Like I said, I'll buy them if they're super cheap in the secondary market all day long. I got a whole stack of them over there just sitting for my sake and slabs that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get back to doing this weekend. I want to try to get two or three up. But hey, what up, homes? What up, my homie? We got Jesse here. So, yeah. Yeah, you should be sorry, Jesse. Unacceptable that you work and have a life and then a husband and a father and all this stuff. How dare you not take my call when I call? Who do you think you are? Yeah. Well, I'm glad, Gary, you're – keep it up, go. Keep it up, dude. Actually, JT and I talked on the phone today, and him and I were talking about slabbage, hashtag slabgate, and, like, our perspectives and our opinions about everything. That was a very uh, – I felt like a very um, – uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A very uh, thought-provoking, thought-provoking conversation. Oh, you all talk. Oh, I didn't even know what you all were talking about the wrench. So I better have a wrench. <coughs> I'm gonna give everybody a wrench. Everybody gets a wrench. You all are so you all are so silly about the wrench. Like I don't even think about that kind of stuff. There's only like three or four guys I think have a wrench. So, but anyways, you all cracked me up with the whole wrench thing. When I come back, I'm gonna have a wrench. That's hilarious. Uh oh, wrench gate. That's a new one for everybody. Wrench gate. Yeah, dude. We're we're talking all about your uh, trips to four sharp corners that you never take. We were talking about what did you miss? The topic today was Hollywood not having an original idea in their collective heads about how Marvel Universe has gotten extremely woke and about rent. We're doing wrench gate. People getting upset. They don't have wrenches next to their names as moderators, you know, because it's all about everybody should get a wrench. You get a wrench. You get a, everybody gets a wrench. Um, talking about slabs. So, I was watching, um, on Netflix, they had a, I don't know if you all seen this, they got wrenches in my toolbox, yeah. If anybody's seen, there's a Kim Jong uh, Netflix uh, stand-up comedy special, and it was like, uh, something it says something like, uh, "What does it say?" Like, like his thing is like, "You complete me, ho." And his his wife's real last name is Ho. She's from Vietnam. So I watch. Sorry, all of a sudden I like yawned in my ear, like like won't pop. It's like it's like it's uh. There we go. It's a little bit better. Ah! But he has this uh, special on. As a comedy stand-up, and as you would expect, a lot, a lot of his humor is Asian-based humor, which I can get on board with because of all my years in Asia and, and and being associated with mostly Japan, but also China and Korea. So he had a lot of his humor was that way. And then 
And, and it was not really highbrow humor. It was pretty typical lowbrow humor. And I thought, but you know, the one thing I was like surprised about was that he got like extremely political and I just was super turned off. It was just like, everybody's pandering to try to get a cheap laugh. Now, like no one's thinking outside the box on any real humor. Like no one's, everybody's scared to be like a real, a real stand-up comedian. So everybody plays it safe, but they will straight up and get, they'll get like, try to get the biggest laughs from trying to be super woke. And it's like so fake. It's like seriously so fake. Like you can just tell there's like extreme pandering. And it's pretty bad when you're a comic and you're supposed to go up there and be thought provoking and even shocking. And, you know, be observation, you know, being an, you know, observationist is, is that observational humor. And like, you can't go any further. Like, you, they can't do it. It's like they can't go past their own nose at anything. It's shocking. Yeah, it is true. And the only like quote unquote like big laughs that Ken Jong had was if he was making fun of like conservatives and whites and, and Trump, which I was really surprised by because. He's really popular along along the lines of a lot of uh, people from all kinds of backgrounds, especially from like the hang up uh, or the hang up, the hangover and uh, community and all this kind of stuff. I was super surprised that he decided to like attack a huge group of his people because he's like a working actor. And I was like really surprised. I didn't see him be in that way. And I just was like, wow, I don't know if that's what he felt like he had to do. That's how he really feels, but I was really surprised because I'd never seen him get political. Usually he's always about like trying to be funny about his experiences, but I was really caught taken aback by that. So but it was it was definitely disappointing. So I would not recommend that one unless you really want to watch a guy struggle to be funny. And then when he the only biggest laps he had were the, the easiest, most ridiculous ones that everybody has already heard ten times before. He wasn't breaking any new ground. He definitely was no Jerry Seinfeld, that's for sure. Yeah, George Carlin for sure. And I definitely didn't like George Carlin, like about religion or politics or whatever, but he didn't have, he had balls, and I at least give him that much. <laughs> Struggle watching got to be funny. No kidding. That's very true. Very true. So that was kind of disappointing. I was like, ugh. So. So what about you guys? Do you all have any topics? you all want to discuss anything you all want to talk about? I'll show some cards. This is all from uh, the Triple Crown 24 crate. Any topics? You all want to throw some stuff out there, you let me know. Yeah, I was surprised, but JT hit quite a few spots in my collection I didn't have. I was shocked that a lot of these cards are base cards I thought I had I didn't have, so... Should I what now? What now? Should you open packs front to back or back to front? I think I like to do mine back to front. I open it from the back and then flip them over. And like it's so weird. Like I see sometimes people like, because I'm right-handed. So when I see people open up packs from their left hand, I'm always like, what are they doing? Like, that's not right. So... Well, I think all of them are black. There's that, Alan. But yeah. I 
I probably got a lot of reds that you might need, Alan. So. So. Griffey Jr. was like the modern day or the, the yesteryear Albert Pujols. Like he had a great run in Seattle, but as soon as he went to the Reds, he sucked. Just like with just like with uh, Pujols. Hey, what's up, NY Yankees fan? Oh, don't you worry. Well, I need to get you to come over and hang out, dude. Like I said, I'm serious, man. See if you're free this weekend. All right, we got a Kosuke Fukudome or Hukudome. I definitely didn't have that one. We got a whole smattering of uh, Kuroda. He was very good, I thought, for the Yankees. I don't think I had this one. This is 2012. Yeah. Thanks, JT. I think I will. But you better believe I'm going to keep them all the ones that I want, which is predominantly most of them. The next talking in cards hopefully will be this weekend. Or well, hopefully be this weekend, Alex. I'm going to go pick up some stuff. Sports card collector 959. What up, Holmes? I'm going to go pick up some sake this weekend. I didn't get a chance last weekend because I never really left the house. It was so hot. It was awful. Another Nori Aoki. Then we got some Donnie baseball coming up next. Don Mattingly. We got some Koji. Got that. There he is with the Red Sox. Shout out to oh boy, Izzy. Another another Red Sox. Daisuke. Yeah, man, it was so hot. Oh my gosh, this weekend it was like 95 or something. Wet, wet before the heat index made it to be like a 105 or something crazy. It was ridiculous. We got a Jose Altuve. We represent the Lollipop Guild. The Lollipop Guild. Okajima. Take on me. Me. Then we have uh, Otsu, Otsu, uh, Otsuka, Otsuka, Akinori Otsuka. We got Siyoshi Nishioka, who didn't even have a cup of coffee. I don't even think he played for the Twins. I think he ended up getting bounced before he even made the team. Yeah, I love that tequila sunrise. You're right. I love it. My son has a my son's travel team. They have one that's similar to that, but it's green and white and black. It's awesome. Here's Iwakuma. Oh, oh, oh. And then we have Yoshinori Tatayama. And then we have uh, Kenji Jojima, who played for the Soft Bang Hawks. So then I have a lot of base, a lot of uh, Reds cards. I'm going to look for. Any big names out of this? Oh, we got Joey V for Alan Neal. Joey Votto card there. Another Joey Votto.
Every Reds player is a big deal. That's true. I don't dis- I don't disagree with that. Another Joey Votto with the Allen againer. I like how some people depend on where you live, like your region of the country. Like sometimes you pronounce different ways, you know, names or like card companies. Like I hear a lot of people say Alan Jenter. I got an Alan Jenter card and I'm, I don't know. Like, is they, are they wrong? I don't know. Like, am I saying it wrong? Alan Ginter? I mean, I feel like it's Alan Ginter, but you know, it's funny. Sometimes you hear people say different names, pronunciation. We got Hunter Green. Or maybe that's Hunter Greeny. Hey, they're wrong. Taylor Trammell or Tramill. Then we got Jeter Downs. All right, so you got some of those. Put that up here. Oh my gosh, I got Joey Votto rookie card I didn't know I had. Nice, dude. Thank you. Oh, nice. Oh, he wore socks and Crocs. Oh, socks and Crocs. Nice. Some people say Don Russ. That's a cool one for Steve-O right there. Johnny Bench and Buster Posey. Oh, that's a cool one. Scott rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, now, yeah. That's funny. I'm going to go ahead and put the Joey Votto one over here, too. Adam Dunn. Another Joey V right here. Another Joey Votto. Boom. There's a Joey Votto right there. We got Votto's exploding all over the place. Everybody knows that's um, Michael's favorite baseball player is Joey Votto. That's hilarious. He's cleaning it up for you. That's awesome. You made you made uh Gary question himself unacceptable. He was questioning his self and his pronunciation. All because of you, Alex. It's your fault, dude. Another Joey Votto. I think I showed one that just like this, but you never know. You gotta be careful because there's so many. Variants now, so it's worth always holding on to all these cards and double checking that they have short prints or variants or whatever that you don't miss it. There's sparkles on belts and gloves, there's short prints, there's action variants, there's goofing around variants or whatever. There's like you just gotta like really be on it and keep a track. There's a Jen Carlos Stanton right there on the same color as Jay Bruce. And then we had that cheater. That cheater's on that card. Zach Kozar. Ooh, got a Johnny Bench right there. I like that one. And Johnny Cueto. Super short prints. You got it, dude. I'm trying to go through these cards without making too much of a stink. That sucks, dude. 
I got a ton. Whoa. I got a ton of uh, Jay Bruce cards. Thing here's a Scott Rowland. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh, rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh. I got a ton of uh, Jay Bruce cards because of uh, JT, man. He hooked a brother up. Then we got another Hunter Green. We got Shed Long. He's out there shedding the long ball. The Big Red Machine. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully he's back. You're right. We got John India. We got the regular paper, first Bowman. But here's a cool one. John India, Bowman Chrome, first card. That's awesome. What? Seriously? Then I got me a Jeter Downs, Bowman Chrome. Those 90s are pretty big prospects for the Reds. And they got a hundred green chrome. So that's pretty cool. Oh shoot, I about dropped them everywhere. I got all kind of Jay Bruce, dude. I don't know. I'm sure. Oh, got Don Mattingly right here. Boom. Don Mattingly Stadium Club. Nice. That right there. Then we got, ooh, Derek Jeter. I'm sorry, Derek Jeter. Kid Griffey Jr. We got the gold um, variant, or whatever you want to call it, gold label, Kid Griffey Jr. What? That's awesome. I don't have this Ichiro card. That's awesome. I love that Ichiro. Hey, what up, Chico? Where did the Ichiro's go? They're over there. We got Don Mattingly right here. That's awesome, dude. You got the Hunter Green. Sweet. That's a good one to have. All right, Jackie Robinson card I've been wanting. Nice. I love those cards of modern day play or modern day cards from uh, old tiny players. Altuve with uh, G, um, Allen and Genter. Old Allen and Genter cards. I got Christian Yelich. Second, second year MVP right there. National League MVP. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm going out on a limb, saying it's him. I know that a lot of people, including Phil's, like it's gonna be uh, Bellinger. I don't think so. There's Ichiro. Ichiro. Oh, Walker Bueller. What? I don't have that card. Nice rookie card. Got the Butte. Walker Bueller. Butte. I gotta slide one of these on there, dude. Oh, I gotta do that to this. I gotta do that to the uh, Joey Votto too. That you didn't sleeve. Okay. What? There we go. I'm going to find a sleeve. It was like hiding from me. There we go. Then we got a Donnie Baseball manager card with the Dodgers, which I did not have. That's awesome. I love that card. Love that Donnie Baseball card. That's probably one of my favorite pictures of him, dude, ever, especially as a manager. That's a great-looking card. Thank you, JT. Yeah, yeah, Hunter Green is still super young, exactly.
That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us, Alex. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, that was awesome, um, JT. I loved it. And I agree with you, Cuban. Yeah, I want to see Alex put that book in there. Oh, yeah, Joe Z uh, Zumaya. I'm friends with him on Facebook. Another Joey Votto. Another JV. Oh, it's Nick Senzel. Bowman Chrome. That's nice. Got more shed long. Dude, you hooked me up with a ton of these young uh, young Reds cards, dude. That's awesome, man. Nick Senzel. A lot of these guys I've shown already, so that's cool. I didn't have these, though. Look at these two. I got a Jonathan Indian and Taylor Trammell. What is Top's finest? Oh, no, Bowman's best. Look at those cards, guys. These cards are great. What is this, Top Prospects card, or what's it called? I think maybe Top Prospect, but man. That is awesome, dude. I'm like so pumped. I don't know how to read. <laughs> I agree. That's the reason why I don't think there should be any more closers that make it to the Hall of Fame. I feel like Rivera should have been the last one. That's a cool looking card of Ramon Hernandez. I really like that card. That'd be cool to get autographed. If he signed through the mail, he's from Venezuela, so I don't know if he still lives in America or he went to Venezuela. But that's a cool card to have. I like that card. Oh, here's a Rawlis Chapman card. Yep, exactly. About the fastball, and the batters can hit the fastballs. You got that right. I just think it's just like you all said. There's King Griffey Jr. That the pitchers just can't hit anymore. They just throw fast. They have no command of what they're doing. There's a cool Joey Votto, Gypsy Queen. People like Gary Matt, uh, Greg Maddox. Man, you just don't see people like Greg Maddox anymore. Hey, what's up, Mike? Why? You better believe it. This is where the cool kids are. Oh, Joey Votto. Nick Senzel Chrome. I'll take that. Uh, Joey Votto, Allen and Ginter, got another Allen and Ginter of Barry Larkin. Do I not have a Barry Larkin pile? I thought I did. I guess I'll just put it over there. Sweet. I got a bunch of Jay Bruce cards. All right, that one's done. One box left to go. We got Yasiel Puig. We got Iwakuma. He's actually Iwakuma. 
I know I have that card right here somewhere. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> what parts of my collection have I not shown on camera? That's a good question. Let me think about that for a second. I have a lot of binders of all kinds of players I collected when I was a kid, and they're all superstars or Hall of Famers now. I've kind of done some binder videos you all have seen, but I probably did like five or six binder videos, and that's like scratching the surface, like five or six players in binder videos. Man, I have so many binders of just like all kinds of cards, and some of the cards might be expensive or really hard to find cards, but they're players I used to collect when I was a kid. So, I mean, I got Tony Gwynn, Kirby Puckett, Sandberg, Dawson, uh, Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin. I'm sorry, not Tom Glavin. J uh, John Smoltz. I don't like Tom Glavin. Um, Will Clark, Kyrie Jr., Derek Jeter. I never talk about Derek Jeter. I have a Derek Jeter, pretty big Derek Jeter collection. Bo Jacks, I have a huge Frank Thomas collection. I never shown any of those Frank Thomas cards ever. I probably have like 50 pages, 60 pages of the cards front and back. Um, so yeah, my, my, my playboy, <laughs> right. You can go through my whole house. You won't see a single one of those. Yeah. We're okay with Puig here. Yeah. Beers and binders. There it is. Saki and slabs and beers and binders. We got ourselves a, a additional video. They got Bo Jackson, King Griffin Jr. is another guy I collect. I'm trying to think of who else I have. Like what other players? Jim Abbott collection. Um, all the Japanese ball guy ball players. I've only I've only shown my Ichiro collection, but then I can really show that video again because I probably got like 200 more cards in the last time I shown that or 100 maybe maybe not 200. Jose Altuve, I got him. Who else is out there? I'm I'm forgetting. So many players. Ricky Henderson, huge Ricky Henderson collection. Wade Boggs. So yeah, I got a ton. So yeah, no, I don't collect trout. I I, I usually, yeah, I got some. Yeah, I got a bunch of rookie cards. Altuve. Um, there's another Iwakuma. Dude, you hooked me up, JT. Man, I can't thank you enough. I'm not going to be at the national mic, so don't worry about it. I won't be there. Oh, geez. I don't need, I don't need them, uh, Chico. Rafael Palmero, no, I'm a, if you want, I'll send you all my Rafael Palmeros. But I figure I figure that'd be more of a more uh Jonathan wants them more than you. Yeah, I got a bunch of rookie cards of each row now. I probably got like I don't know, six to eight each row rookie cards, nothing huge. Some of them are graded because you know I'm all about the graded cards. I mean, that's kind of what I'm into. Uh, I collect uh Christian Yelich now, Puig. I'm a, I, I collect some Puig cards. So he's another guy I collect. So, yeah. Ain't no PD PC in my house. Like, people like Jonathan who sent me some PD players, I put those off to the side with my, like, care package ones so I don't mix them up with my own collection <clears throat> or the stuff I bought, like, at flea markets or yard sales or you know, lots. So I don't mix up the stuff people send me with other things. Got Christian Yelich. I was just talking about him. Here's a Bowman card there, Bowman Platinum. And then this is a cool one. I like the rookie cup of Christian Yelich.
All right. Why IPC? Oh, oh, team cards. Yeah, probably. I thought you meant teams. I'm like, why PC the Reds? Every single Reds card that JT sent me, I'm going to keep if I can put it to a set. And I have a couple of binders that's full of like Reds cards. Any other thing y'all want to talk about? Any other topics or questions? Anything you want me to rant about or talk about? I'm sure I could get a few more people uh, to leave my channel if I get going. I was getting close to like 10, and then I started ranting, and then people drop down to seven. People lose, people get, you know, butt hurt. I can't handle it. I got a new Jack Jason Handy video I'm gonna to release tomorrow morning. I did the, I did this morning. So that'll be good. Yeah, how much money? I heard uh I forgot, I think Phil maybe Filmington mentioned that they raised around maybe five a thousand. Was it five hundred dollars? I feel like I wanna say they raised more like a thousand dollars. Maybe I'm wrong. I feel like they said he raised like $1,000 for uh, his family. That number may be uh, grossly over, over, uh, over, I, over, I overdid it. Yeah, okay, cool, 1000 I, I want to say 1000 and I thought, hey, you know what, I'm not 100% for sure, so that's awesome. <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that about again, Joe Ryan uh, fan, but it's cool that people did that. That's really cool, 1000 Dollars, super classy. We had a classy group of guys in this uh, collecting world, in this in this hobby, in this community of misfit children. So cool. So that is awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna go ahead off of here. I've been on for an hour. That's an hour of y'all got to see this beautiful face of mine. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope it wasn't too boring. It wasn't too trigger worthy. It wasn't too woke for most of you guys. I really appreciate it. Hope you all enjoy um, the rest of the day and a good weekend. And I'm out like a fat kid in uh, rugby. <laughs>